Last week's Accelerate Aut Conference ended with a bit of a surprise. The $150,000 Pitch Fest prize suddenly ballooned to $750,000, and one of the companies walked away with $250,000. We're talking to Cybernetic, one of the winners from that week's Pitch Fest competition this week on Techopia Live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Techopia Live. I am your host, Craig Lord, the editor here at Techopia. We are back in the accelerator space at Invest Ottawa, where a number of the, uh, the economic development agency's startups are surrounding us hard at work. Now, last week, as I mentioned, Accelerate Aut ended with a bit of a twist. We, we thought that the six startups were pitching for $150,000, but in fact, it was a big $750,000 prize pot. Uh, one of the companies that walked away with a bit of cash was Cybernetic. And so we brought uh, Joe Cummins, uh, the founder and chief technical officer of Cybernetic, to talk us through a little bit about what this company is offering. Uh, Joe, this is a cybersecurity company. That's right. And one of the things that I find interesting about it is we, we often have cyber companies on Techopia, but it's very hard to talk about what they do. But the, the, the point of Cybernetic is that you're actually visualizing cybersecurity environments. Can you break down how you're doing that and what that means for companies? Yeah, it, it's, for me, it's the ability to show, not tell, what your cybersecurity posture looks like. Uh, most organizations have a sense of what their existing tools tell them. Uh, they have a, a number of different products that they will use in order to kind of gain uh, a pretty good understanding, but again, nothing amalgamates that information together, and then nothing allows them to actually see it in full three dimension. And what I mean by that is, uh, when you have the ability to stage all of the different layers of cybersecurity that you'll typically use in a given organization, either in a control system or in an enterprise environment, you want to be able to, to see what that looks like, not just simply be told what it looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, so with CLAW, our technology, uh, CLAW allows an organization, sort of like an MRI, to be able to see with high degrees of confidence what that data set, what those different tools tell you, and then be able to shape that understanding of what that organization will actually need uh, in order to defend itself, where the attack might come from, uh, or even be able to remediate or, or to solve some of those problems that we find, which is, uh, again, every, every time that we've done an assessment, we walk away with something. Mm -hmm, sure. mm -hmm. uh, it's clear that you are addressing some kind of problem out there in the market. You at least convinced yeah. Mars IAF that you know there's something to invest in here. That's right. uh, going back to that pitch about a week ago, sure. uh, I was in the audience and I heard you say that you are a black hat hacker yeah. and you then made a couple threats that you could basically break in anyone's phone in the room. Uh, go go a little uh, a little uh, villainous if you wanted to, but sure. why then did you decide? Okay, I want to uh, do something that will protect rather than you know take advantage of all these vulnerabilities we're seeing in the market. Um, my background is, is very varied. I was lucky enough to be uh, talent spotted when I was much younger. Mm. Uh, I served in the Canadian Forces at 16. Uh, I would actually be in uniform for four years before going off and starting my own professional services company myself. I have a strong relationship with, with Canada. Uh, I've worn the uniform, I'll bleed crimson and white to keep the flag the way it is. And, and not many people in our industry have that same affinity to having a strong ethical and moral background, but also understanding what it, what it means to be able to do some of those hacks. Uh, what, what I've seen from the front is a lot of companies, a lot of individuals out in the world can do some very nefarious activity. So I was part of that community for a time. We were tasked with breaking and entering on systems that belonged to an organization. We were paid by that same organization to break in. So in a lot of ways, you're red teaming or you're trying to assault uh, a, an encampment or a, a, an organization that is already well aware of what their security vulnerabilities are, but they're looking for somebody else to come in and think about the threat scenario that they haven't thought of yet, or maybe something that's new. So it kind of gives you this malicious mindset. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I denigrate myself or I, I tease myself and 
describe myself as a black hat hacker. You come across with this knowledge and you have this understanding of how to actually uh, remove the security apparatus or, or disassemble the linkages of that security to be able to gain access to that trusted environment. Mm -hmm. Whether you're disrupting, disclosing, or damaging that, that network, or if you're able to disrupt their business and their way of life, that to me is, that is the, the pinnacle, that is the holy grail. Mm -hmm. What I, I really enjoyed at the time was uh, critical infrastructure, uh, the way that our society works. We require clean water, we use electricity, we have a way of life. So if there's a way to destabilize that yeah. in, a, in a country that's not on our Christmas card list, then how do we actually, what could we do? And we're seeing that effect in real time. Uh, just this past week, we've seen attacks in Argentina. We've seen attacks right now between two nation states, Russia and the US, basically mm -hmm. you know, dropping gloves and squaring off, and you're seeing it happen time and time again. That is the constituency that I come from. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting to hear that, you know, though you're, you're trained in the offensive, if you yeah. want to put it that way, that's exactly what equips you to be on the defensive side. Exactly, yeah. and that's the way I perceive it. If you're able to aid, or if you're able to help the security operator with that mentality, and bring that mentality into the corporate environment through the lens of a technology, you are so much more capable of unlocking value for that organization. Uh, there's yet to be a, a situation where we've gone into an organization that has a clear sense of the latitude and longitude of all their vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we typically unpack with them is a resiliency assessment. And they're able to see themselves, oh man, I didn't, didn't realize I was there. Or something along the lines of, um, you know, we've been, you know, using product X for so long and now all of a sudden this new technology comes out of nowhere and we now have full visibility. Well, we no longer need these other products because we have full visibility with our existing security investment over here. Mm -hmm. And that's a phenomenal value proposition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, interesting to hear that, you know, almost no one has a, a perfect shield. So there's, there's right. multiplying almost opportunities in this space for companies like CyberNetic to get in and, and address any gaps that are, are and new gaps that are constantly yeah, coming always, up, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but give me a sense of where the company is right now. Sure. Uh, you're, you're a member of the Invest Ottawa Accelerator. Uh, yep. You just won a big pitch fest competition. Uh, got some, some investment there. But uh, what would you say is, is kind of the status of the company? What, what are you building towards? And, and uh, what, what's kind of the status right now? It's a great question. So since January, we've, we've effectively leveled up the company a number of, I'd say almost fourfold. Our uh, existing headcount has tripled. We've seen uh, the community of practice around us really kind of rally. Uh, the company itself has now been able to take on that seed investment. We're now working at, and punching above our weight class. So we're able now to compete with organizations that have their Series B, Series C, mm. uh, that are well entrenched, well established companies. We're seeing them being questioned and Canadian cybersecurity being elevated. So in a lot of ways, there's a number of factors that are, that are actually unfolding now in real time. Uh, we just did uh, a quick session on Monday afternoon with uh, one of our initial groups, York Angels. Mm -hmm. So I went to Toronto, I, I spoke with the group at a York, uh, Sector was around them. Uh, and they themselves have seen that they have the ability now to understand what the existing cybersecurity investments look like and what makes sense to them. Uh, and then for myself within the company, uh, my time is no longer my own. Uh, we're definitely a victim of our own success, which is a good thing to have. Yeah, and that, uh, that's another interesting thing. Obviously, there's, there's benefits that come with getting a bit of money uh, and yeah. in investment, winning a big pitch rest like this, but what are the, the other intangible benefits? You know, the, is your, your stake, your, your yeah. profile elevated a little bit now? We've really put cybersecurity on the map mm. in a lot of ways with Canada. Um, what I had felt for a, a while was that the cybersecurity community in Canada is just a uh, another group that's affixed to the American market, mm -hmm. and that to me was a little bit not mm -hmm. not necessarily unnerving. It was just it doesn't fit right for me. It doesn't sit right. Um, what we've seen already is that organizations that had originally perceived Canada as sort of a uh, an area where not cybersecurity is focused on, we see that is in fact not the case at all. Mm. Being reached out through LinkedIn, uh, having my personal email, like everybody's asking me for questions. Hey, would you like to speak at this event? Uh, and then on top of it, 
having other uh, entrepreneurs in the space, people who have developed technology, coming to me and saying, hey, I see what you're doing with Claw. What do you think about this piece of technology we've developed? And again, it's coming from spaces like defense research, uh, the private sector, mm -hmm. we've got other individuals just in the community that practice who are trying to fill a void, trying to do things themselves because they're seeing that there's so much disconnect in the existing vendor marketplace mm -hmm. that they're saying, you know what, I need a tool that's gonna do this, this, and this for me better than what is available out there. So mm -hmm. they're bringing those and they're kind of bubbling up to the top. And mm -hmm. I, I just take it as, uh, it's a very humbling experience to have individuals approaching and showing their life's work. What do you think of this? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. But uh, mm -hmm. a great opportunity obviously for yourself, for Cybernetic to, to say, you know, this is uh, a time to build the reputation of a yep. nation and we can be at the forefront of that or play at least a small role in it. Exactly. So. Everybody loves Canadians. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think that's a brand that we're in danger of losing Not anytime soon. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Joe. Uh, it was you. great to have you on and hear about Cybernetic, and, and congrats again on the Pitch Fest. Thank you very much. a big accomplishment. Uh, before I let you go, though, uh, I want to take a quick moment and thank some of our sponsors, without whom Techopia Live would not be possible. I want to start with Number Crunch, offering virtual CFO services to SaaS firms. There's TD Bank, offering specialized programs for tech firms. There's Pearlie Robertson, Hilda McDougall, a leader in business and tech law. There's the University of Ottawa Faculty of Engineering, creating the next generation of technical talent. There's Stratford Managers, offering services to help you scale up your tech venture, and KRP Properties, offering so much more than just space. Now, Techopia is not just this fantastic show. You can also find us online at obj.ca slash techopia for daily articles covering Ottawa's tech scene. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Techopia OTT. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please leave us a like and a comment and subscribe if you'd like to see more of our weekly tech interviews. Apart from that, I just want to thank you very much for joining us again for the latest episode of Techopia Live. We'll see you next week for the next episode. Hope to see you then. Thanks.